All right, everybody, final session of the day, and I can't think of a better way to close out this incredible summer community day than with our friend Kara North. And um, yeah, I know that everybody in uh, in attendance probably it was a really really short break for you, um, so thanks for sticking in sticking with us today. Um, Kara's going to be talking about looking beyond the hype and keeping you in the center of your L and D career. I think this will probably be one of the more important things that you can learn today. And um, again, Kara is absolutely, I mean, I don't even know how to go about introducing Kara. Kara has been, we've told this story so many times before about, you know, I think it was in 2017, how you started attending TLD cast and stuff like that. And Kara, I have seen you like um, your trajectory in L and D has just been absolutely breathtaking. Um, probably one of the most impressive things I've seen in, in this space. And I've been around for, for way too long. So, um, you know, if you don't know Kara, um, connect with her on LinkedIn. I don't even have your LinkedIn profile up. Oh yeah, I do. Let me paste that in the chat. So, connect with Kara. And with that, I'm going to hide myself and just let you do your thing. Okay. No, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much. Thank you for the kind invitation. Really excited to close out this just amazing day of community and bringing everyone together. So I'm here to talk about something a little bit different. I think that there are a lot of great opportunities out there, especially if you are maybe new to L&D or perhaps you're you know, mid-level and looking to upskill or whatever. I don't know if you all been looking out there, like looking, you know, but there's a lot of different things you can do to upskill in a lot of academies and boot camps and whatever. So I want to go through some stuff today that I don't think there's a lot of people talking about it. I've actually kind of put my neck out on the line over the past year. I've really kind of done this investigation into a lot of the stuff going on. And I'm just going to share with you some of the stuff that I found. I'm going to go through some claims that various boot camps and academies say. I'm going to share with you what the research says about what your uh, employers are looking for if you're looking for a job and then wrap up with some advice on how again you can keep yourself in the center of what your your journey is in l d so i will warn you i am going to get spicy i am pulling exact claims from these academies these are on public facing sites i didn't do anything nefarious it's in their marketing copy and i'm going to be deconstructing it and i also want to share it with you because i think if you actually look at it without the additional context without the images and all the scrolling pages of doom that they have maybe you'll see something too so i'm just putting it out there if you don't like it that's fine too we can have a conversation about it which is cool all right, so before we hop into it, I want to explore a little bit about why there's an ID Academy and boot camp everywhere, it seems like, right? So I think that there's kind of three main reasons why they've kind of popped up, okay? So the first one is, and, and this isn't anything new, but if you are formally educated in learning and development, let's say you got a master's degree, or let's say you have your doctorate or whatever that is, you know, there is a huge disconnect between the formal education experience and what you have to do on the job. And that gap has been there for a while. That is not anything new or groundbreaking. And I think that that is one reason why some of these academies have popped up to help fill that gap for job seekers. If you went through a formal education experience, maybe you're looking to learn the technologies, maybe you have a really good foundation of the theory, you're looking for ways to apply it. So that's one reason why they've popped up. Now, with that being said, kind of in that era, I'm going to say, there were very few out there, right? There weren't a whole lot out there. But then something happened last year. And I'm not going to go there. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. And there were a lot of changes in our world. I saw a lot of teachers being pushed to their limit. I'm sure you've seen it as well. And so fed up teachers, rightfully so, God bless them, have been looking for another avenue or another different, you know, career for, for them in order to, to go forward. And so they found instructional 
design and there has been a lot of academies and boot camps and everything pop up to cater to that population of people looking to transition. Maybe you had a different career. Maybe you're looking to, to start something new. So again, on the surface again, makes sense, not nefarious. First one makes sense, not nefarious. However, there's a third one here that's popped up and I would venture to say that's where a lot of the interest has came from is, you know, the saying, if money can be had, people are going to come out of the woodwork, right? So through my own research and through some of the digging I've done, currently I know of at least 20 plus instructional design academies and boot camps out there, and they're not cheap. Several of them are several thousand dollars. OK, so a reason I wanted to do this session is I really wanted to help you read between the hype. I think that a lot of it is tailored by snazzy marketing techniques and saying things that are really preying on the emotions and the vulnerability of a population looking to transition and maybe get their first role. So without further ado, let me know in the chat if you're ready to roll into some instructional design academy claims. So if you're ready, let me know or let me give me an emoji um, either or. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to start with one and I'm just going to let it sit here for a second. And let me know in the chat maybe what you are seeing in this or your reaction to it. But a proven roadmap on how to actually get a job in instructional design. Okay. Sounds great right? Sounds wonderful. Uh, who doesn't want an instructional design job, right? If you're looking, you're, you're wanting some help and guidance. Absolutely. So let's deconstruct it. So looks like several of you kind of picked up on some of this in the chat, but I mean, that's kind of promising someone a job, right? It, it's saying indirectly through the hype, if you want to read between the lines, that if you're part of this program, you're going to be rewarded with a job. It's going to have a return on the investment of your money. But several of you picked up some of the stuff. Did you notice there were a couple words capitalized? And what do you think those words were? It was actually improving. And what's that doing? That's preying on the emotions of folks that are maybe, you know, I think Sarah said this earlier today about how many jobs people are applying to. I mean, it is a transition. And from what I understand from talking to other teachers, I never was a teacher. That's a disclaimer here. But it sounds like the job seeking process for teachers is a little bit different, that it's not as, ten you know, you don't have as much tenacity or whatever. It's you apply, you know, pretty quickly, you move on, right? But it's a different game over here in learning and development. And if you don't know that, it can be really frustrating for you as you're on your journey. So something like this, like, hey, this is a road map, I, a proven, I'm actually going to get a job. That sounds wonderful. Shut up and take my money, right? So that's one. Another one is this is actually a psychology marketing technique of the verbatim effect, meaning that it is something that is really, you know, pulling on your heartstrings. And you're like, hey, this is the answer to my prayers. You know, this is what's going to help me get over the hump by just, again, using those words. And then the other thing, too, is in a way, I feel like it's also implying some kind of a system failure of, hey, you're not the problem here. It, it's got to be a system. There's got to be some hack or shortcut or roadmap, you know. And a lot of the presenters today have talked about, you know, how to apply for jobs. There's been a lot of great advice given throughout this conference today. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it's not always just the system. You have to be upskilled and you have to be ready as well. So there's one claim. I uh, don't know what you all think about that. Uh, looks like <laughs> Mike Jones is pulling an Oprah over here. You get a job and you get a job. Yeah. So, I, you know, and Crystal, you bring up a great point. I just don't think learning and development has had this kind of influencer effect until recently. And I think that's part of the reason why some of these have been coming up too. All right. But I'm not done. We're just getting started. Let's keep going. All right, this one was put in, I mean, in these pages, you all, they scroll forever. I don't know who thinks that's good design, but that's a whole other topic for another day. You keep scrolling, 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 yeah. And you see something like this, and it's about employers, that they don't want to train you on how it really works. 
so they won't even give you a chance. So let me know if you any thoughts you might have potentially on that. So, you know, employers, they don't want to train you and, you know, they won't even give you a chance. So my take on that, I think that's kind of like this bootstrapping approach, right? That, you know, if you're going to get that job, you got to be great at everything. Mike Jones did a fantastic presentation earlier today talking about, you know, not being dangerous, but being proficient, right? And it's preying on those emotions. And I believe there was research shared in the last session about, you know, women primarily do kind of wait until they're fully qualified to apply versus men. Sometimes they'll see the qualifications and apply. And, you know, I don't know if you know this or not looking around, there's a lot of women in L&D and there's a lot of women looking to get into L&D. So something like this might also prey again on those emotions. And some other things is I, I'm an accidental instructional designer. Most of my friends in learning and development are accidental instructional designers. So what about them? How did they get into L&D if nobody showed them the ropes or gave them a chance? One of my proudest moments in my career thus far, and it is going to go in my retirement speech one day, is I knew that when I was in a position to lead a department, I was going to pay it forward because somebody took a chance on me. I can proudly say that I have a couple accidental instructional designers on my team currently and mentoring them and growing them has been one of the biggest privileges of my career. And the fact that, you know, this ignores the accidental instructional designers, I think is a huge loss and again speaks to their lack of knowledge, I think, of what is really going on in learning and development. Another one is it assumes uniformity, right? So I have a mentor. Her name is Dr. Dawn Snyder. I think the world of her. And she often asks the question, you know, what does good look like, right? And good looks differently from organization to organization when it comes to instructional design. Departments will have different ways of doing things regardless of where you go. I don't care if you work at Amazon or in higher education or wherever, you are going to have to have some kind of onboarding to the way that that L&D department does business, plain and simple. And so it really assumes that there's just uniformity across the board, and there's not. So that's another kind of thing that is dispelled. And then finally, it kind of positions the employer as an enemy in a way. Like, you know, they're not going to help you. So you got to help yourself. And to a degree, I do think it is important to upskill yourself and own your own professional development. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. But it, it sounds like you're not going to be supported at all. And, you know, again, I cannot imagine how horrible a job would be if I wasn't supported at all. Uh, there was a presenter earlier today talking about when do you talk about, you know, the career development and, and mention onboarding. I thought that was brilliant. It really gave me some things to think about. But, you know, how miserable would you be if you didn't have your own development in your career? So, again, that's just kind of my take on that. I'm also trying to watch the chat here, too. Oh, Mr. Suarez has joined us. Hey, Joe. Good to see you. All right. You all ready for some more? Is this fun? Hopefully. It's not fun for the people they're taking advantage of, though. That's the sad part. It's not fun for them. But I we'll, we'll keep going here. All right. This one has two different sayings, right? So in the marketing copy, it's like you're going to get real-world paid experience, right? You can add it to your resume. But then right before you click to give that credit card number, it changes to say possible paid opportunities of work experience with my client. Again, true story. Feel free to reverse Google any of this stuff. You all will find it out there if you are maybe doubting some of the stuff I'm saying. Very simple here. I think this one's really cut and dry. Absolutely, this is bait and switch, okay? Getting people excited for paid work opportunities and then yanking the carpet out from underneath them is not cool. And from some of the survivor stories that I've heard from me being an outspoken critic of a lot of these academies and asking people to do their due diligence, a lot of the survivors, if you will, have shared with me, they hung on hoping that they could get some of that paid experience to maybe recoup some of the investment of their money. And then when they asked about it, guess what happened? They got ghosted or blocked on social media or kicked out of the program for asking a question. So very simply, why would you give this person your time and money? 
it's not morally strong fiber. I mean, it, it's suspect. And again, this kind of stuff is bringing down our profession. And that's why I'm speaking out about it, okay? Um, that's a real downer, yes. Uh, so thank you, Tom, I agree. It's a real stinker. So I have, uh, have one more for you. All right, this one is about portfolios, okay? So everyone knows how great portfolios are, and I'm not saying they're not, but it says, you know, in short, it puts in structural design job market on easy mode. I'd like a shortcut, wouldn't you? And I'd like to cut through all this stuff and make it be easy, right? But is that all we do? Are we just like Bob Ross's making pretty little interactions with pretty little next buttons? It's much more than that. It simplifies the dearth of what we have to do to get things across the finish line. And through my experience and research, I'll be sharing with you here in a moment, I think that there are positions that you can specialize in e-learning development. I don't think that's necessarily going away, but I'm seeing more and more positions wanting kind of that unicorn and wanting somebody that can do a little bit of everything. And so if you can only do one little thing, Mike Jones had a great presentation about talking about, you know, making sure that you can do a little bit of everything. You know, I, I think that that's a nice feather to put in your hat. You don't want to just solely focus on one little thing because what if that goes away or what if it's automated, right? So, you know, it, it's focusing on content creation only. Here's the thing, you all. If we only do content creation, we become a transactional industry. You know what happens to transactional industries? They're, they get cut, they get offshored, there's no value in what we do. So this is why a statement like this is completely dangerous. Again, another thing is shortcut. Regardless, you're still gonna have to do an interview, right? Now this might, this might catch it the eye of a hiring manager, right, or something, but you're still gonna have to go through the interview process okay all right sorry the chat is going fast and i haven't been able to keep up with it so you know hopefully that was helpful for me to deconstruct some of that hope that that doesn't necessarily you know hope it's not painful yet but i really want to also focus on you know how can you see beyond this hype right so if you're new you don't know anybody you know what can you do to make sure that the money that you're investing in your future if you do a boot camp or a program how can you know that that's going to be a good return on investment? How can you know that it's going to be legitimate? Hey, Mr. Godinas. All right. First question, very simple. Who's leading this? Okay. And I'm going to have 10 little things that I like to say kind of under this umbrella. If it was me, I would want to be able to tick the box and feel confident about all 10 of them. And I know that this is, again, going to be slightly controversial when I've shared some of this before. I've had people call me out and say, you don't know what you're talking about, and that's fine. But this is, again, my money, and I'm a miser. I hold a dollar until the eagle cries. I read 20 Amazon reviews before I spend $20. You are not getting five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 of my money for nothing, okay? So here are some questions that you have a right as a consumer to be asking, okay? So number one, what kind of experience do they have? Do they have a servant heart? Are they somebody who is giving and loving? You want someone that loves learning and development. It's clear when you talk to them, you'll know if somebody loves it or not. You'll know through their body of work if they love it or not. Don't just give your money to somebody that just wants to pad their wallet and flex about how much money they make right? Do not take somebody at their word because they have a Facebook profile. Do some digging, okay? And to go along with this, where have they worked at? There are leaders of ID academies that have never stepped foot in higher ed or corporate, but you wouldn't know that unless you did some investigation into them, but they'll take your money and tell you that they'll get you jobs in both, okay? So be very critical and do some digging. Here's another big one. If they're going to teach you a tool, if they're going to teach you articulate storylines, they're going to teach you TechSmith, Camtasia, Adobe Captivate, they better have some kind of public facing profile and portfolio because if they don't, how do you know if they got the goods to teach you, right? So, you know, the, there are several people that don't pass these three in the sniff test of the academies that I know of, okay? But that's not good enough and we'll keep going. <laughs> All right. 
I think it's important that they have presented and also maybe won awards in our industry, right? You want somebody, again, that loves learning and development. If you love learning and development, you're going to give away your time and talents. You're going to share your knowledge and, and those lessons learned with the industry. It's going to happen, right? And maybe you've won some awards along the way. Now, a word, word of caution about awards. Awards are not always what they seem. There are awards that you actually pay for and they send it to you. There's one ID Academy leader that has an award, has a picture with an award. It's $1,500 and I could actually send in $1,500 and get that award and give it to my cat, Bib Fortuna. I could say my cat's an award-winning instructional designer. So just be very clear on that, okay? So do do your due diligence on that. And you all think I'm kidding, but I'm but I'm not. Um, Another one, their crew, how are they qualified? Sometimes you'll sign up for these academies thinking you're going to talk to the anointed leader. You don't get a single bit of FaceTime with that person. You don't ever get to see them, but you only work with their crew of whatever they call themselves. And a lot of times they're, they just graduated maybe a week or two before you. So again, you're paying money for expertise that is still not there yet. So you have the right to ask that question going forward. Another big one, this is one that I really get angry about, is, you know, are they saying that they're mentoring you? If they're saying they're mentoring you, I just, this is my own personal belief for a second. It shouldn't be a paid arrangement. I've had several people who've given me their time and talents in the industry to get me to where I am today. Not a single one of them asked for my credit card number. Okay. And I think that mentorship is a mutual relationship. It's not a power relationship, right? And so if you're paying them, they might coach you, but I wouldn't call them a mentor. And so somebody saying, oh, I'm your mentor. I'm going to help you. I'm going to champion for you. That might be a potential red flag. Some other ones. Are they still a practitioner? You all, there are people leading ID academies that have not worked in the industry for 5, 10 even 15 years, okay? They say they have, but you look at their portfolio if you can dig it up and you can't see it because it's still in flash, right? So, you know, there are people that make their money off of you and you're feeding their families through their academy and they're not in the, the practice anymore. You have a right to know that. And that is something that you should ask. You know, again, don't take their word for it. Don't care how cute their testimonials are or, you know, whatever they have out there on their site that's all flashy. Ask around, dig around, get on LinkedIn, see what they're commenting on, see what they're sharing. Look, do your due diligence. And then this one is so important. I gave it two numbers. Trust your gut. If it doesn't feel right, doesn't seem right, it's probably not right. Okay. All right. So, probably went way too deep in that, but I just wanted to, again, give you a lot of data points on how you can vet people, okay? But I'm not done yet because that's just the person. Let's talk more about the program. So you need to know what you need to do to be successful in this program. And first thing is, you know, you need to avoid if they're saying, oh, you got everything, you just need to do blah, 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 blah. You know, teachers, you are changing careers. You have a lot of transferable skills, but you still are going to put in work to bust into L&D. And you need to know that going forth. If they're promising you the stars and the moon, that could definitely be a problem. Another one, and this is a question that only you can answer, is, you know, what skill gap does this address for me? Going to one of these websites, taking a little, should I be an instructional designer quiz that's like a ripoff of BuzzFeed? That's not it, y'all. You can only answer this question. To thy own self be true, as Shakespeare likes to say, right? Where are you currently at? What skills do you need? And how can some of these programs get you there? You have to put in the work for that, okay? You have to figure that out for yourself. Don't take their little quiz that, by the way, they all say you should be an instructional designer and give them your money. Um, don't do that, you know? take your own time, assess your own self, okay? And then um, the time commitment. So 
if you don't have the time to invest in it right now, don't do it, right? Don't think, oh, I can make the time or whatever. It's a mindset. It's an investment. So if you are paying the money, you really need to focus on making sure that you have the time in order to give it a shot and, and do what it, the program is saying that it's going to do. All right. Another big one, you know, what's being promised? You know, is there any evidence of what it is that they're saying? You know, if, if they say they had 100 graduates get hired at Google, where's the list? Show me the proof. Don't take their word for it. They're sales people. They're marketing people. They want to get your money. Let them earn your business, okay? If, they, if they're making these grand promises, show me the data, show me the evidence. And ask also about the standards, right? So at the end of this program, what should I be able to do, right? Should, should I really be able to do a full instructional design project from start to finish? Should I be able to uh, create a, a storyline interaction without using a template? Like, what is it that you actually need to do at the end of this to be successful? How is success and, and, and completion operationalized? Is there things you need to be asking? All right. Another big one is, you know, what can you do if it's not not for you? Is there some kind of a money back guarantee or an evaluation period? I cannot tell you how many horror stories I've heard from ID Academy survivors that have been borderline verbally abused by people <laughs> in these academies and ask for money back and they get blocked, cussed out or whatever. OK, you need to ask that up front. Because whenever you're asking in the middle, when there's an issue, it's going to be too late. Yeah, it absolutely is horrible, Rachel. You're absolutely right. It, you know, I'm not here to make light of this situation. I'm, I'm very angry that this is going on in our, our profession. And I just think it brings, like I said, the entire profession down. Another one, you know, what can you do if you're not happy with the person? You know, that's the nice thing about our industry. We're kind of a global industry. There's a lot of great people out there, but you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea and everybody's not going to be yours. And that's fine. But you should have the right if that's not meeting your standards or you don't like their style of communication or you don't like something going on, you should be able to end that contract and you should know your rights. Now, again, I'm not a lawyer. This last one, again, remember, I'm not a lawyer, but before you give your money, again, several thousand dollars for some of these, you all, what are your options with your financial institution? If you're not getting what you need, if you're getting ghosted, if you're not getting the help that you need, could you potentially charge it back on your credit card? I don't know. But again, if I'm making that big of an investment, I want to protect myself as well. Okay. Other ones, you know, how am I going to be supported? You know, will this person be a champion? for me. And a keyword champion, right? You want somebody in your corner. You want somebody that lifts you up. You want somebody that's looking out for you. Are you, are you treated that way? Or are you just another number who's paying money? That's something to think about. And again, after you complete it, what's next for you? Are you put on the alumni hall of fame? Do you get a, a t-shirt? Uh, do that? Do they block you out of everything? You know, you need to know kind of what the end game is here. Okay. All right. And then lastly, you know, what is being taught? I cannot stress enough before you buy, get some kind of a sheet or document of what the curriculum is. It's going to be covered in this academy and then vet it around. Ask people questions. Is this really what ID does? Is this really going to be helpful in my career? Don't take their word for it. This is also something I recommend if you're looking for a master's or, or doctorate program. If you can't get a curriculum sheet, that's a potential red flag. You should be able to get a sense of what it is that you're going to learn in this academy. Okay. And, you know, is it really setting you up for success? I'm a hiring manager. I've never got excited and jumped out of my seat when I saw somebody with an ID certificate of the person of the academy leading it and thinking, man, this is a great person, right? Now, again, you're putting a lot of work in there and you're doing stuff. I realize that. But at the end of the day, it matters what you can do with the stuff that they've put in there. What is the end product? How can you build things? How can you tell if it has an impact? How can you do the whole instructional design process if that's what you're looking for? So hopefully that was helpful. Um, Tom, I'm sorry, I don't mean for it to help everybody to look bad. Um, basically the TLDR here, take your time, okay? Take your time and wait before purchasing and do your due diligence, okay? And if you like this content, 
I do have more of it coming soon. So I'm currently doing a discourse analysis on various claims across ID academies. I have a bunch of them. And I'm also working on an ID academy guide where I will go through and answer some of these questions for folks. And that'll be something that will be available also on my website. And yes, Crystal, that's another great marketing technique that they use of the exclusivity. Sign up now or you won't be able to come in forever, right? So I think that that's really, really important. Hey, Kim, good to see you. All right, so I'm almost done. I'm going a little bit over, I'm sorry. So I do have some research. I did some research last year. It finally got published in a peer reviewed journal about you know what are instructional designer employers looking for. There's the link, or if you want to snap the QR code, you can get it. I did it with my colleagues at the Ohio State University's Research Laboratory for Digital Learning, and we were just really curious, you know, what can we learn from job descriptions about what employers are looking for, and we actually mapped it to the ATD capability model. I'll also pop that in the chat as well. Nice thing about this is th this is free. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to be an ATD member, but it's also just kind of a nice way to kind of anchor what some of these things are in these job descriptions. So what we did was we collected a sample of job postings last year, and then we went through and we coded each of them, did a content analysis to map them to this ATD capability model. And then we also extrapolated out information like what kind of tools are being asked, you know, what are some uh, knowledge that you need in the door before you come in, et cetera. And then, of course, we summarized our findings because, you know, it's what you do in research, right? So if you're interested in kind of how we picked our jobs, we wanted a full-time job. For this research, we did do the United States, although I think it would be fascinating to replicate this and do it for our global audience. Um, we wanted to make sure that instructional design was somewhere in the job title, obviously, and make sure that there were um, roles that were listed and then required and preferred qualifications. So if you're curious, just want to see like a page of the code book, it looks something like this. So, you know, we uh, numbered the cases, we put the, the job title, the company, where we got it from, et cetera. And then we went through and we rated it against the this ATD capability model. OK, so in our research, what we found is these were the top five capabilities that were listed in our sample of instructional design job postings. So. If, again, you're new to instructional design or you're looking to upskill, I highly recommend checking out these five capabilities in the instructional design, um, excuse me, the ATD capability model, because you should be able to get more information and you should also be able to potentially upskill as well, right? And then what's interesting is the bottom three were knowledge management, lifelong learning, and business insight. And I found that fascinating because lifelong learning and knowledge management are so critical and business insight for that matter to what we do a lot of times, especially in a corporate space. I was really, really interested in that. And we talk more about it in the article about why we thought potentially it went that way. All right. So again, if you are on the job market, here are my findings of the, the top tools. So Articulate Storyline was the most popular that was listed, and then Adobe Captivate, and then TechSmith Camtasia. So video um, development is also as important as e-learning development as well. So, And then there's some other ones that were listed there as well. OK, so how can you keep yourself in the center of your career? Again, call me old school. I believe in Shakespeare to thy own self be true. You got to know what's important to you. You got to know what it is that you are wanting to do and your goals, right? So for me, something super important is I like to keep growing and learning myself. And so I uh, believe Christy Tucker said earlier today was talking about, you know, if you wanted to add value, a great way is curation. And so if you're looking to curate and read and learn more about, you know, not only just learning and development, but then how we intersect with just technology and psychology and all these things, here are some tools that I recommend. Um, so this logo right here is actually refined. It's five links a day it sends to you and you can kind of tailor down kind of what what it is like you can say what you're interested in and then if you find it interesting it's a fun fact a lot of people may or may not know this i use this tool called buffer and buffer will automatically post to my linkedin and twitter for me so my job postings i do every morning 
I'm not, I'm not on LinkedIn at 8 a.m., you all. I do it the night before. So the nice thing is if you find something interesting, either at Refine or Feedly, which is also an aggregator, share it with the world, right? I think that's what Christy was also saying earlier today. But, you know, if it's bookmark worthy, it's worthy enough of sharing it out. You never know when it might be that piece of information somebody else is needing additional help with, or it can also help maybe jog something in them and kind of help them get to the next level, right? So again, if you're looking about keeping yourself in the center, these are kind of my three kind of core tenets, I guess. So the first would be, you know, develop yourself, right? Never stop learning, never rest on your laurels. You know, another thing that I think is problematic by a bunch of the marketing around some of these academies is that, oh, you can learn everything, you know, in a day, or you can be one, an instructional designer in a week. I've been doing this my pretty much entire professional career, 10 plus years. I still don't know everything. And that's what I love about it. I learn something all the time. And I get to learn with the team. I get to learn with my, my friends across the globe. And that that's what it's all about. So if you think that you have to know everything, this might not be a good career choice for you, truly. I believe it was Marco Faccini said this a couple years ago on TLDC. Luis, you might remember this about, you know, I don't want to be a know-it-all. I want to be a learn-it-all. And I love that. And that is how I see kind of, again, keeping myself at the center of kind of my own career. Also, I think it's important to stay curious, right? You know, keep keep pulse on what other uh, industries are doing when it comes to training. You realize that there's training is pretty much everywhere, right? So, you know, feel free to poke around, look in other industries. You know, I recently, this past year, moved into manufacturing for the first time, had no idea about anything about manufacturing. I'm learning something every every day and it, it's, it's fun. And then again, set goals. So, you know, where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? You know, what does success look like for you? Success might be that six-figure income or success might be that work-life balance. Only you can answer that. But making sure that you're setting goals to get there, I think, is really, really critical. All right. Sorry I went over just a little bit. Um, I like to leave with a 30, 60, 90 plan for you to, again, think about how you can digest a lot of this information that I gave you tonight. So, you know, start with kind of, again, the next 30s. Think about where you currently are and where you want to go. And, and take your time. If you're going to pay for an opportunity, please do your due diligence. Do not take people at their word. They're asking for your money, right? Let them earn your business, okay? So be really critical about that. Next 60 days, act. Do something. Try something out. My friend Jonathan Hill did, recently did, you know, 52 weeks of Articulate E-Learning Heroes challenges. He worked out loud, and you can see his progression of just his mastery of the tool throughout. You know, you just never know something that you share that might inspire other people. I think it's really critical to share. And then reflect. I think that's super, super important. What went well, what didn't go well, and then rinse and repeat. So with that, Luis, I'll have you come back on. I do think I have some questions in the Q&A. Here's where you can connect with me. Um, I actually redid my website, so I have a new website now. Um, it's still in process, but um, yeah. And then I have a podcast with Joe Suarez that we desperately need to do a new episode on. And then you can find me on YouTube, Unfiltered ID. I do have a series on there about ID academies and boot camps. All right. So, so I guess this, question? this would be the perfect time for me to announce me and Alex Godinez's um, Thought Leader Boot Camp. I knew it. I knew it was coming. You, he's been working <laughs> so hard on the weekend to be a thought leader. I'm not surprised Mr. Godinez is, is, is taking that that path. So, uh, <laughs> No, thank you, Kara, so much for doing this. This is great. I love it. I mean, you just consistently deliver with everything that you share on TLDC. Um, so fantastic. Uh, I just loved it. And I'm looking forward to actually rewatching this because I want to take the time to be able to, um, to, uh, to absorb this again because it was really, really good stuff. So thank you. Uh, you are welcome. Um, do I have time to get Kim's question? Oh, absolutely. Okay. What was it? All right. Um, Kim says, someone at my table in the lounge was asking about portfolios. If you haven't touched on this already, could you please share a couple of folks that look uh, they can look at for good portfolio advice? Yes. So I have some kind of 
gold star standards, right? So I think gold star Kath Ellis, she was mentioned, I think, earlier today. Um, other people I recommend, I think Tim Slade has a fantastic portfolio. I would check him out. Um, Joe Suarez has a good portfolio. I would check him out. So I would also caution, you know, if you're looking at portfolios, also, again, look at where the people have worked at. So, you know, Joe recently went uh, full consultant. So did Tim. So if you're looking to do consulting work, they might be good to look at also Kath. But if you're looking for, you know, folks that are still in the corporate space or maybe in higher education, I'd really, again, start there. Where do you want to go? And then start to look at portfolios that way. My portfolio, it's there. I wouldn't say it's stellar, but you get you get. You can see what I've done. <laughs> so. Yeah. There really should be a place where we can just link, you know, like quality portfolios. I'm sure other people have done it. I'm trying to recall like where I may have seen that before. But, oh yeah, um, Tim, Amanda, Amanda is killing it. Um, mm -hmm. She, yeah, she's got a good portfolio too. So. Awesome. All right. Well, Kara, thanks again. And um yeah. I just want to congratulate everybody that is actually in here right now that managed to um, participate during the day. You're on the right path. Um, you know, summer community day, career development. Uh, I'm, hopefully this was a useful day for you. It, I thought that there were a ton of incredible resources shared throughout the day. We had nine sessions and then of course the lounge was open, their booths and all of that. So I want to thank you for participating and for supporting TLDC by just even being here and looking forward to the next one. I think for winter community day, community day, I'm going to do one on um, trends and innovation. So if anybody is interested in helping out with that, let me know. I'll be um, probably making a call out for that too. I would like to do a DEI event next month um, as well, but that one's still in the formative stages. I need to find the right pieces for that because I want it to be really special. So I'm trying to pl plan that for, um, for October. And then December, I am really trying to work on a show and tell that uh, we can have as many people as possible participate on that. And it might even be a multi-day event. So um, the rest of the year, as far as monthly, I think we're covered. And then um, we'll go from there. We've got our weeklies that we're going to continue doing. Continue doing. So um, if you haven't joined as a TLDC member, go to the TLDC.com. I feel guilty about <laughs> signing up for membership now. It's not expensive. So, and I could just use the support to help pay the bills, but I'm not charging thousands of dollars. I'm just trying to, uh, to save up enough money to throw a live event. How, how's that? So um, thanks everybody. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Kara.